Whoa! Good day, everyone. My name is Raymond Rivera. But wait, there's more. I am John A. Desho. I am Kay Garcia. I am Rika Beatrice Wagan. We are the Abnilicious Group. We are from the College of Economics and Management. Department of Agribusiness Management and Entrepreneurship. Today, we are going to report the Commodity System Analysis of Cyber. All ready? Let's go! Let's have a quick overview of the commodity. In the Philippine setting, labor force contributes 39.8% in the gross domestic product or GDP, while the agriculture sector contributes 20%. Being one of the major players, let's proceed on knowing soybean more. Soybean having the scientific name of glycine maxinal, a legume crop known as one of the world's major crop or utau, it is known for being a great source of protein, source of oil, vitamins, and minerals, and utilized for byproducts, raw materials, and processed foods. Just a brief history of soybean. Soybean originated from Southeast Asia in 1100s. Uh, first introduced in US and Europe in the 18th century and in 1970, technologies were first generated in the Philippines. In 1980, there was the National Soybean Pilot Production while in 2003, there was FNCA Soybean Mutation Breeding Sub-Project. And in 2004, and in 2004, there was an exchange of breeding materials of various countries. And lastly, there was Soybean Development Program by DABAR in 2011. The following are some of the countries having the same dilemma, just like the Philippines. We have China, Brazil, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam. As for the socioeconomic importance of soybean, it provides employment and contribution in the GDP. You can see in the screen the report follows this commodity system analysis framework. From the input subsystem, we have production subsystem, then processing subsystem, the marketing subsystem, and lastly, for the consumers, together with the help of support subsystem. Initial sector of the agribusiness system is the input sector, comprising the materials and practices needed for the viability of soybean farms. The major input for soybean production is the local and imported seeds. Other inputs include fertilizers such as triple 14, pesticides and other production supplies. To ensure the success of the seed germination, the planting time must be set in early May with a temperature of 55 to 60 degree Fahrenheit. The soil must be well drained, fertile, loam to clay soil, and the pH level must be 5.8 to 6.5. A farmer practicing a conventional way of production would technically utilize 50 kilograms of seeds and four bags of triple 14. Meanwhile, 40 bags of organic fertilizers are utilized for organic production. Organic fertilizers are said to be found and concentrated in Surigao del Sur, Agusan del Sur, Negros Oriental, and other municipalities of Mindanao. To sustain the availability of inorganic fertilizers, the Philippines is highly dependent on the importation from China, Indonesia, Korea, and other countries. Looking at the farm sector, according to the DA in 2018, producers of soybeans are U.S., Brazil, Argentina, China, and India. Soybean production in the Philippines contributes minimally to the overall supply. As of 2020, our country ranked as 83rd in terms of shares in the production with a total of 544 metric tons. The top producing area in the Philippines is Region 9 with a total area of 1,064 hectares. Moreover, the land area for soybean production decreases annually with a rate of 6.37%. The average land area is only 850 hectares. The average farm gate price for soybean was 25 pesos per kilogram. It all starts with land preparation and field selection. The choosing the best and appropriate variety of seed. Next is furrowing. Seed inoculation with rhizobium bacteria. Fertilizer application. Next is planting where we have to consider the planting seasons in some regions. 
Next is irrigation, which is optional. Crop protection, seed sowing, which can be heal or drill method. Weed management and cultivation, harvesting, threshing, and drying. Several technological developments were made for planting materials and technical management for success in continuous soybean production. Processing sector. Given the high nutritional value, soybean can produce products for industrial uses such as biodiesel and biocomposites. For food for animals, it can be soybean meal or soy protein. For food for humans, here are some of the soy products. The most common here is the soy sauce, which is used as condiments here in the Philippines. Here are the manufacturers of the soybean globally. Most of them cater to research and development activities and supply in the international market. The total export volume in 2019 amounts to 149.07 metric tons. The total import volume amounts to 182.24% metric tons. The total production volume locally is only 658 metric tons. We now proceed to the marketing sector that provides the economic overview of the commodity. Currently, there is a tight rivalry between Brazil and USA in terms of production. Brazil, as the leader, has a volume of 124 million metric tons of soybeans. The movement of the commodity typically begins with the transaction that is being arranged by the dicers involving the farmers and traders up until the consumers. Only 2% of the volume produced are retained by the farmers for subsistence and planting purposes. The remaining 98% of the volume undergo complex distribution to the traders, retailers, and wholesalers. Soybean meal as the most valued element of the soybean has the feed milling companies as the target market. To increase the quality and the price, the beans undergo further drying done by the municipal traders. Various programs were implemented by the Department of Agriculture, promoting the essentiality of soybeans to social welfare. Under the assumption of 1.5 tons and 2 tons per hectare yield, the ROI is projected to be 129.37% and 187.32% respectively, with 25 pesos per kilogram farm gate price. From November 2019 to October 2020, there is a middling fluctuation on the prices. The highest was $465.55 per metric ton in October 2020. The total supply of the soybean crop is the summation of the local production, imports, and previous year's ending stock, while the demand for the soybean crops consists of local and global demand. In 2017, the highest amount of production was 353.03 million metric tons while the lowest was 205.23 million metric tons in 2004 globally. In 2018, the total production volume of the Philippines was 658 metric tons. In the Philippines, soybean oil has an annual average production of 1,000 metric tons and the total supply has increased by 30.35%. The country is projected to increase the importation of soybean from the U.S. Soybeans have the ranking of 52nd place as the most traded products constituting the 0.32% of the total trade. In the Philippines, soy sauce is the top export product with 3,767.27 metric tons, having Canada, USA, and Saudi Arabia as the major markets. Next is the support sector. The Department of Agriculture wants to build a sustainable and community-based soybean production and they aim to establish a viable product processing industry here in the Philippines. Through the help of public and private sectors, Bureau of Agricultural Research, being the major agency that helps the coordination and funding of different agricultural and fishery research and development activities. They are also the forefront agency that conduct the R&D activities for study. Also with the help of other institutions like the University of the Philippines, West Dynas, and DA bureaus, including the Bureau of Plant Industry. These are other institutions supporting the commodity system. These are the programs, activities, and projects that were reported for soybean R&D by the Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development of Department of Science and Technology. Um, these are accomplishments that were realized despite of the projects only nearing its first year. The project one is supply chain mapping, 
Project 2 is serving production system. Project 3 is identified challenges. Project 4 is serving variety development. In productivity enhancement, the area of concern includes appropriate post-service facilities for trashing and cleaning, or sorting, and good policies. In investment priority, the investment on strategic markets and starting more cooperatives for the farmers, the important things to improve in the commodity system. Lastly, in agri services, high interest rates for sustained credit services is the only area of concern. After the analysis, our group therefore conclude that although soybean is one of the cheapest crop that has a lot of use for individuals and the cons and community which has a great impact in the economic development, there are some hindrances including the following. Philippine soybean import has a huge demand and the locally produced soybeans are barely promoted and not market driven. In line with the commodity system, the group came up with a suggested framework, as you can see in the screen. Through the full cooperation and partnership of the public and private sector, the viability of soybean may be on the verge of success. The Department of Agriculture, with its attached agencies, and the Department of Science and Technology contribute a vital role for research and development necessary for continuous endeavor. The LGUs also participate to arrange the process within the local municipalities, FDA, DTI, and DOH, as the intervention in the marketing sector ensure the rights and safety of the consumers. In integrated analysis, this includes the strength, weakness, opportunity stress of input, farm, processing, marketing, and support sector. Let's start with an input sector. The availability of imported input materials is one of the strengths of the sector. As part of weakness, there are limited seeds for planting. For opportunities, the DOST PCCARD had developed a project for a better soybean production. Lastly, global competition for soybean seeds is the threat faced by the input sector. Next is farm production sector. One of the strengths is soybean can be grown in any place except for areas with heavy rainfall. But the weakness would be lack of information about the modern production technologies. There's a huge opportunity given to the farm sector because the Department of Agriculture aims to develop a better farm facility. But the threat is there's a presence of insect pests, weeds, and other forms of infestation affecting the, the yield. In processing sector, the strength includes existence of large-scale processing companies and the opportunity given to processing sector includes proper training and processing equipment provided by DAR. There's no weakness and challenge faced by them. Marketing sector. Technically challenged due to lack of information and mobility of the farmers towards the market, but the strength in it is serving is good quality alternative crop. In line with the opportunities offered by the variety of products from soybean, it expands its contribution and shares both locally and global standards and strength include rising tariff on imports. Lastly, support service sector. And they were supported by different government agency and the Department of Agriculture. However, the weakness is there are limited places in planting soybean. Commonly, soybean are planted in any areas but not those with heavy rainfall. Opportunities include farming communities find convenient to plant soybean because many agencies and cooperatives are automatically buying the harvested soybean. Since there are demands for soybean, it is challenged by limited materials and technologies for planting, poor quality harvest, potential market outlets, and limited capital to expand planting of soybean. And now we have the following recommendations. Number one, for the input sector, we have the promotion of agri-dealership in rural areas, a market-based solution to increase access of farmers to agricultural inputs. Number two, rehabilitation of irrigation facilities increase the number of yield, thereby increase the overall production. For the production sector, we have the improving production or productivity through strengthening market linkages, stimulation of production and productivity, creation of more opportunities for vertical integration. For number four, we have the support for farm mechanization, provision of new technologies and credit system. Number five, transnational corporations, research and development, manpower technology. 
For number six, digital marketing or MyCrop, a sustainable data-driven, scalable, intelligent, real-time collaborative agri-food system. So for MyCrop, MyCrop is a technology-enabled platform. It is a collaborative platform that strives to combine cutting-edge technology, innovative business models, and focused human efforts to serve smallholder farmers. It number one, it empowers farmers through delivering information, expertise, and resources. For number two, increases productivity and profitability. Number three, improves the standard of living. And lastly, facilitates farmers in taking and executing optimum decision by providing geomapping, crop planning, individual farm plans, and farm automation customized for each farmer based on the weather soil, pest, crop data on almost real-time basis. For number seven, we have the promotion of soy products. Soybean consumer market study is needed. Support to soybean processing, capacity development in technology use. Number nine, for InstaPro, an alternative to solvent extraction. For the support services, we have implementation of programs by the government existing and future plans. Number 11, dissemination of technologies. Then we have this figure in the screen. The Philippine soybean industry should follow the market system implemented in Zambia, as you can see in the screen. Here, it is recognized that quite a number of inputs in the chain are imported before being supplied by input suppliers to the producers. The number of players at each function of the value chain are large in most cases, and this together with the constraints, opportunities, and supporting institutions, which may reflect policies and enabling environment issues, as well as provision of business development and other services. Now we have the soybean supply chain. The soybean supply chain is complex and includes many sectors. However, a small group of big companies control large volumes of, produce, of productions at key points in the supply chain. And there you have it. Always remember, a tree of success starts with a seed of hard work. So always keep safe and see you soon. Thank you guys for listening.